Idiocracy is a 2006 film that depicts a pessimistic view of the future. Instead of flying cars and interstellar travel, humankind has evolved backwards into a generation of morons. The reason the film provides for this is that just like DJ Khaled, humankind is suffering from its own success. With no natural predators, evolution simply rewards those that reproduce the most. This leads to each generation becoming dumber than the last. When I first saw this film, I thought it was a fun and simple movie. As I get older, I realize humankind is barreling towards this eventuality. And if you can't beat them, join them. In the film, the lead character Joe Bowers, aka Not Sure, aka Luke Wilson, aka Owen Wilson's brother, was able to solve a crop famine by watering crops with water, like from a toilet, instead of Brondo the Thirst Mutilator, which has the electrolytes that plants and humans crave. Watering the plants with Brondo did work for a good while for the people of the future, until the electrolytes that they so craved led up to a salt buildup in the soil, which led to the famine we see in the movie. I wanted to see just how effective Brondo the Thirst Mutilator would be at watering crops. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. In this video, I will be substituting Gatorade for Brondo the Thirst Mutilator, as Brondo sadly does not exist. However, Joe Bowers does state that it tastes like Gatorade, and I'd say that's an effective stand-in. I will be using blue Gatorade because that is the best flavor. In my third grade science fair level experiment, I chose the black eyed peas because I wanted to be 3008, not 2000 late. I planted each individual bean in its very own super cozy start that I had prepared prior to filming. Folks, never forget your mise en place. Once I planted the peas in 72 separate starts, it came time to number the rows. The six rows were given numbers 1 through 3, which correlate to a ratio of Gatorade. More on that later. I then removed the starts to enable the filling of the irrigation channels based on row. Hot glue was suitable for the task. This will reduce the ground water, or ground aid, cross-contaminating between rows. Whilst heroically battling the autofocus on my camera, I rigged up a timer to simulate day and night cycles for my crop. I plugged an ultraviolet light, aka grow light, to let there be light. With a source of light present, all the plants needed was something to drink. Plants in the first row will receive water, like from a toilet. Plants in row 2 will receive a 50-50 mix of water and blue Gatorade. Our stand-in for Brondo the Thirst Mutilator. Partway through, I realized I didn't need to use the syringe and could just pour the liquid. Once the elixir was homogenous, there was only one number left. Row 3 is just Gatorade. Blue, of course. I then moistened each bean with its row's respective moistening agent. After three days, cracks began to form in some of the beans. Those cracks led to adorable little sprouts, thrusting their taproots into the soil, drinking up all of what they crave. Several days pass and those days give way to some early risers, taking the photosynthetic initiative, reaching towards the stars. Well, the lamp they think is a star. My beans throw out their leaves and their brethren aren't far behind. But there is another organism that's also seizing the initiative. Mold. This mold from a Google search or two is a common sight in overwatered plants. I hypothesize that the sugary runoff from the Gatorade has contributed to the growth of the mold. While the mold certainly behaves like cotton candy on my q-tip, I can tell you with certainty it does not taste like it. Some time has passed since the mold removal and the beans have begun competing for the pseudo sunlight, growing tall and making me proud. But just how tall? I measured the length of the stem on every bean plant, and here are the top contenders from each row. From row 1, the tallest bean was 11.25 inches. Row 2's tallest plant was 9.5 inches. And in row 3, the tallest bean, fueled by pure Gatorade, was also 9.5 inches tall. But those are just the outliers. The mean height tells a fuller story. The mean height for row 1 was 4.44 inches, row 2's was 4.27 inches, and row 3's mean height was 3.88 inches. That was the mean height, which is commonly referred to as the average height. The median height is also very interesting, and it's a good way to look at data excluding outliers. 
Quick refresher, the median is when you order all of the numbers from lowest to highest, and you select the middle. If it's a tie, you take the mean, which is the average, of those two numbers. This is a great way to get a more realistic look at a set of data. Row 1's median height was 4.38 inches. Row 2's median height was actually higher, at 4.5 inches. And last, but definitely least, Row 3's median height was 4.05 inches. By taking the mean of the median and the mean of each row, we can get a more realistic view of the data and compare each rows respectively more accurately, which will allow us to determine the effect of the Gatorade to the growth of the beans. I took care of the math and my findings were not what I expected. The data I'm about to share is comparing rows 2 and 3 to row 1. Row 1 being the control that is just water. Row 2's half and half mix of Gatorade and water only led to a 1% reduction in height when compared with row 1. Pure Gatorade or pure Brano the Thirst Mutilator only led to a 10% reduction in growth when compared to row 1's pure water. From this albeit limited data set, I have to conclude that plants do indeed crave electrolytes, and the people in Idiocracy weren't that stupid for watering plants with Brondo the Thirst Mutilator. I do suspect that watering crops with sports drinks of any kind would lead to a buildup of electrolytes, aka salt, in the soil, and would lead to a famine like we saw in the movie. But for a single-use crop, I don't see any downside in using it other than that would be substantially more expensive than using just water. With the measurements out of the way, I repotted every single plant to allow for new growth, a brighter future, and a better tomorrow. They all died within a week. I had a bit of an idiot moment myself. I put the grow light high up to ensure even distribution to the plants so they would all get a little taste of sunlight. However, in my quest for equality, I deprived each individual plant of the sunlight that it needed to survive. Guess the electrolytes weren't enough in that case. After my own personal crop famine, I looked at the box of the UV light that I used to provide pseudo sunlight to my plants. It was rated to be a foot and a half away from plants at the most. I put it about six feet away. With the exponential reduction of luminosity from the distance between the light and the plants, I reckon the plants barely got any light at all. Well, to my visible eyes, I saw plenty reaching it. It clearly was not enough. I suspect I completely starved all of the plants of light and accidentally ended the experiment a bit early. I would love to sit before you eating soup made from Gatorade-fed black-eyed peas, but sadly that's not the case, and I am truly sorry. If you enjoyed this experiment, I encourage you to go out and try your own version of it and learn from my mistakes. Do better than I did. If I brought this to a science fair, I would probably lose to a couple volcanoes before being escorted off the premises because I had no reason to be at a children's science fair. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe so this video and your comments reach as many eyeballs as possible. I would love to make more videos like this in the future, however this sort of thing requires a lot of time commitment. I would also love to get some input on the next experiment. Thank you so much for watching, have a good one now, Bye bye